Uh, Australian kayak specialists on the Gold Coast have done a fantastic job with Stealth, the Stealth brand in Australia, promoting kayak fishing in Australia, uh, as has Rod Pasidi, whose YouTube channel is uh, Rocket Kit. He is a fantastic ambassador for our sport. Um, I would love to have 50,000 subscribers on my channel, but the truth be known, he's probably a better ambassador for the sport because um, he's um, more polished. Um, he tends not to say fuck like I do. And, um, and yeah, he's probably a, um, a, better, a better person to represent the sport. And God knows we need representing in Australia. There's a fantastic band of people that kayak fish in Australia, um, proud of proud of the experiences that I've had, and I'm proud to have built many good friendships. And yeah, anyway, enough of that bullshit. Let's get on with looking at the boat. Um, there's a lot to look at. I will take my time and see if I can um, be as comprehensive as I can. Th this this is not how to fit out a boat. This is how I fit out a boat. So. Just want to be really clear that I'm definitely not saying this is how you fit out a, a, a stealth. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, now as you can see, these things are a beautiful boat. I've, I've actually gone for, um, I, think, I think Rod said this was called Mist Grey. Um, it's Mist Grey and it's got some uh, sections of green hoops. On the underneath and um, and that's a really good thing now it's a color that I've actually really come to appreciate now this is the first thing that I want to show you is these are these are very subtle things this is a, um, a ram mount and I've screwed it into the handle so that it's bomb proof because what I've found is excuse me a lot of the um, GoPro mounts that are made for um, putting on kayaks in the surf and things like that they're um, they the camera tends to tilt uh, especially if you put them up the front here these when you put the cameras up the front of the kayaks and in kayak fishing especially when you're going out through the surf it gives unbelievable footage it's awesome you get the um, you get the profile uh, looking back at the uh, the kayak angler and you also quite often get the wave in the background as well which gives a really good um, it gives a really good perspective. I really like it. Um, I suppose what I will do is I will start with my paddle leash. That's a really important thing. It's a um, it's a system that I've used for years. Now this system will prove to be gold when you uh, come off in the surf. Your kayak has gone miles from where you are and you don't want to swim 230 meters back to the beach. Because let me tell you, going out and surf is exciting and it's thrilling, but I've nearly drowned twice in the surf through kayak fishing. So you lose contact with your kayak. Sometimes that's the tipping point when the danger starts to flood in. And, um, and so yeah, some, no, not, not everybody likes to use any kind of leash to their paddle, some guys just like to have the paddle free and if they come off the, the boat's gone and that's their choice and it's not a right or a wrong thing. Um, I, because of those experiences where I've nearly drowned, I personally like to hold on to the boat. Um, both times I've gotten into deep shit, it's been when I have lost contact with my boat and I'm swimming in a surf zone and there's rips and it's all kinds of bad and Baghdad. Um, anyway, what I was going to say is, so yeah, so what I've done, I've got this loop here, and the reason for that is that to put a stainless steel fitting directly over this handle here, if, I'll show you what the leash does in a minute, if that um, fitting smashes onto the front half of the kayak handle, it can chip the gel coat. Fiberglass is, is a beautiful product in that it's very fast in the water for a kayak angler, but um, it chips, it can be repaired, but it does chip and it does scratch. So half the beauty of these stealths is that they're sexy and uh, why eat into the sexiness before you need to. So yeah, so, and what I do is, um, this is a new thing that I'll talk about in a minute. So I've got me, me paddle leash. It's basically, it's an eight mil bungee. 
it's fixed with a carabiner clip on the side um, and it goes to a loop here and it's an 8mm bungee so it's a big loop and it's joined to the paddle this, this is the paddle leash now this is the system here that I've actually I've modified on this boat so what I'm going to do with this that that loop there just bear with me here that loop there is going to sit inside that ring and what that's going to do is it's going to enable me to have a paddle leash that's the full length of the boat it goes from the front to the paddle and when I come off in the surf and the paddle leash is engaged it will allow an extra stretch and it means that there's an extra amount of give in the um, the bungee so that the boat can get even further away from you before it starts to tension and come back um, I've normally run quite a quite a shallow uh, sorry quite a short um, leash from this loop in the center to where I hold it this one runs the whole way back to the handle and it obviously would it'll droop down in the water so the reason that I've got this this um, little fitting here is basically to pick up the slack so I can have that full length of the boat from the paddle trolley back to the paddle and then if I should come off in the surf that should if I just had that I've actually got that quite tightly done but I'm just going to have that when I launch I'll just have that loosely and then if it, I come off that should just pull and that's always the way it goes so if I come off I come off in the surf let me do that there who cares if it didn't work out it's part of being a human shit doesn't work out all the time in life isn't it so that pulls through and I will literally just have that hanging on by a thread so it will actually give and then in the meantime that will just be sitting on there like that through there um, I have I suppose what I can do is I'll talk about the lid first of all I have gone for a Garmin big fan of Garmin don't have any affiliation with Garmin at all um, I just I've had some bad experiences with some other brands who I won't mention because that's defam it's def defaming a product um, these are bomb proof that's what I've found and that's one of the biggest things you want I honestly believe in kayak fishing is you want your kayak to have a sound that's bomb proof so I've gone for a Garmin I think it's a Striker Plus 5 CV it doesn't have the maps but it has quick draw map drawing facility which means that it will draw a map as you go so you can actually um, if you're fishing an area like Palm Beach guys on the sunny coast Sunshine Beach guys um, the Fingal New South Wales the Coffs Harbour guys if you're fishing an area regularly it means that you can draw a map of the contours of the bottom of the the ocean I love it I absolutely love it so so yeah so that is the only piece of my last kayak left in existence in my world the knob on my hatch and that that's just a quick release system that sits on there so that when you're out fishing you if you should fall off or go over obviously that's going to be tight and then because you know if you've got a fish on the line and it's coming in and you don't want to be mucking around it's um it's just a matter of quickly releasing that and then open she goes um i'll show you this so what i do i, I flush mount the sounder into the lid and then i put the plugs into the sounder and i never take them out ever is it the right way to do it i don't know it's how i do it um it's worked for me i could be doing this wrong i i, I could very well get a sparky here one day and he looks at that and says you need to have done this and you need to have done that i don't know what you guys out there do what i do in life is i just do the best i can and i make a lot of mistakes and then through those mistakes i learn and then i modify and i do things differently so what I have done is I've plugged the power cable in and the transducer cable in and I'm sickering them in and I'm going to leave them permanently and I'll just give you a bit of light so you can actually see 
what I've done, that's the power and the transducer cable and obviously I have put these little fittings there to hold those cables in place because the last thing you want when you're opening and closing the hatch is for the cable to become a, a tangled mess. I, I like it to be slack enough so that it will actually open and sit there like that. Um, and then what I've done, I will, I'll put this on my head so that I can actually look at the stuff that I'm talking about. So what we've done here, I have actually modified these straps. These come, they're only about that long. And I sometimes take quite a bit of gear. I take gaffs. Um, I've got the camera boom over there in the corner that I put on the rear rod holder sometimes. Um, and so what I do is I take, I get these um, male and female Velcro. These are about a buck for a meter. It's as cheap as chips. And, um, and I replace them so that they'll actually hold a lot of gear. And then these here, as I think I've gone over before, these are actually the foot straps. And they come on that part there. And those two holes there are those exact distances there. So they fit straight onto there. And this is a system that I've run for years and years on the stealths. Um, so that's my transducer and my power cable running into there. Um, this is going to be a bit of a talk, talk here. So I have um, epoxied. I used Sika last time when I did this system and it failed. It just pulled off in the end. So I'm using epoxy. And that is my pouch for my transducer. And what I do is I put my transducer in here and then when I launch, I just sit that on there and it's stuck, it's stuck to the Velcro that sits there nicely. All my spare cable is in behind that door. That's standard now. I thought that was a really clever idea. That comes out standard. So I've bound up all the transducer cable, the, the bulk of it. I've stuck it in through that door. And what I've done is I've, um, I've stuffed the extra transducer cable and I've only got enough not bound up in the bundle to be able to pull out and put over the side of the boat. And what I do is I've got this system here. I've run this on my last Pro Fisher. I just, that's just, um, actually, that's one of the original rod holders that come here. And I just have that here and it just holds the cable straight and that'll sit, the cable will sit under my leg. The transducer will sit underneath the boat there. And, um, and I've got a magnet. Oh, I better show you that because one of the things I'm really bad for is I just assume that I've said something about something before. So the magnet there is epoxied onto the top of the transducer. That's a um, six centimeter by 1.5 or two, I can't remember, centimeter by 10 mils, I think it is. Anyway, whatever. That's on eBay. And exactly the same magnet is inside the hull here in that, in that space between the fish hatch and the outer hull. And it's, um, it's sickered into the bottom of the kayak. And when I'm out, I simply put this over the side of the boat and it just snaps up inside the, um, uh, um, the, um, the underneath of the uh, kayak, sorry. And what I've done, I have to take this off to show you. I've run the cable, that's the power cable there. So the power cable runs underneath the seat to there through there and I've actually got it sitting in a Tupperware container and that is heat shrink so where I've got my fuse I've heat shrunk onto the join so that because it's going to be there's water will get in here there's no kayak can avoid that it's unfortunate you wish it wasn't that way but that's the way it is um, so yeah so I've got these little joiners that are holding the power cable in place and they're basically, excuse the terrible camera work, but it is what it is. Um, and they're everywhere. And they're, they're the same thing that I've got. The same thing that hold my cord there for the, um, for the hatch. And, and the battery will obviously, put this back on my head. The battery will sit in there. That's one of the, um, 
the FPV power batteries that will sit in here. They are sold by Dennis and his father at Kayak Specialists. And it will sit in there and then what I'll do is I've got Velcro on the bottom of the, f the fish hatch and I've got Velcro on the thing there. And it'll just sit there. And that ain't going nowhere. And it leaves room for my rod butts here. I get rid of the bar. Some guys love the bar. It's, it's chocolate. I like chocolate. You like strawberry. It, there's no right or wrong answer. I don't like the bar. I get rid of it. It annoys me. It eats up space. And then obviously that's the hatch there. Plenty of room in there. Um, now, just trying to remember if I'm, th I'm thinking of everything here. So moving to the back of the boat. The original idea was to run the power cable inside the boat here, along inside there, and then it would have come into the back of the kayak hatch through a seal port here, and I would have done the same thing with the container in here. The power cable wasn't long enough, and there's no way I wanted to join the cable in here somewhere and have joined cable with heat shrunk stuff on there. I just, not, not, inside the kayak if I have to get it out to repair it it's too much drama if I have any wiring issues when it's inside the hatch here it's no big drama um this is the live well this is the biggest thing now this is the thing that a man got excited about this is the live well here the last boat I had it was behind me um I don't have back issues so turning to get the live get the live baits out of the live well wasn't a big issue for me some guys don't like that. The thing I didn't like is that sometimes, um, because the um, live baits, yakas or slimies or whatever you've got, because they're, they're slippery, I found that if I was side saddling and I grabbed the live bait and I went to turn around to bait up, I'd quite often, and it was gone, the bait was gone over the side. So I'm really looking forward to having the live well between my legs and the last thing I think that I need to show you is the hatch, obviously. The rear hatch now on these live well capable pro fishers goes all, all the way back. So there's shitloads of storage. So not that the storage before was bad, but this is a big increase and really like it. And obviously I've got the, um, the twist and the lever so you've got the you've got a rubber grommet here on the door which is a really good idea it's almost like a hush shutter and then you push that closed lever and it's done and this is a system that I I've run for years I have um, I have these rings here stainless steel rings I have them on all my rods and what I do is um, I've, I've actually caught a fish before from those rings where the rod went over just amateur hour beginner level stuff and the rod went over the side and I was hanging on to the leash managed to get the rod back and ended up catching a 25 kilo cobia because of those leashes so yeah so what that is it's literally a piece of four mil bungee and I just have them on the pad eye of the kayak there and what I do is, when I'm out past the surf line, I clip them onto the stainless steel rings, and then there's no dramas there. And then when I'm coming back through the surf, I just put them back on the loops like that, and they just live on the boat. They just stay on the boat permanently. And um, that's a lot of talking. That's a lot of talking from me. I haven't, I haven't, um, I haven't got in front of the camera for four and spoke, but. Um, good friend of mine, Kerry Flowers, uh, kayak fisherman, he's got a phenomenal channel in New Zealand. He, um, he said to me a while ago, the thing with YouTube channels is people need to see your personality. Uh, it's all very good having a screaming rod and having rock music, but sometimes people want to know who you are. So I think what I'll do from now on, I don't have a lot of people um, following me. It's, um, it's uh, look, it's a plus and a minus. It's a plus because... I don't have a lot of people writing um, critical nasty shit on my channel and I don't know how I would go with a huge volume of that. So um, I've, I've only got a hundred or so people following me but I kind of like that. I kind of like the idea of it only being a few people. It allows me to, you know, 
it just stay grounded to the fact that I'm it's a it's their home videos of some guy who lives in Australia who goes kayak fishing and there's a couple of people that are interested um, yeah so that is a 2019 stealth pro fisher 525 with the live well and I hope that video has um, given somebody out there and even if one person out there got an idea that they're going to change and make better well it was worth making the video and um, looking forward to summer and catching up with all of you guys in the kayak fishing community and uh, having good times so yeah thanks